CBS News national correspondent Manny Bajorquez joins us live now from Savannah. Uh, Manny, Savannah is such a beautiful place, mm -hmm. but it is a low-lying area. Can you talk about the conditions there? And, you know, they also deal with these types of king tides um, just in a regular, you know, capacity besides mm -hmm. having a storm system on top of it. That's right. So we are along the river walk here. That's the Savannah River behind us. And you can see there's not many people out here. Typically there would be. And that's because people have been told to uh, stay indoors and stay away from low lying areas. We're in a bit of a lull right now. We had gotten some squalls uh, just earlier this morning, some heavy uh, rain and winds. But guess what? The worst of that is all still yet to come for Savannah and for these coastal regions of North Carolina and South Carolina, where they've also declared a state of emergency in those respective states. So you're talking about coastal areas that are low lying. So not only is there the concern that if it comes here as a hurricane, it'll churn up surf and you'll get coastal flooding, but all the rain that's falling too, several inches of rain expected in these areas, well, that all could merge into a nasty flooding situation in many of these low lying areas. Areas or areas that don't drain well. There's also the possibility of tornadoes. We have seen tornado warnings spinning up as well uh, as we have been driving around this morning. And the other thing about Georgia and some of these areas of the, of the south is, as you know, these large trees, and if they're old, well, the wind, of course, can push them down. They could fall on homes or on power lines. That's the worst case scenario. The Savannah mayor uh, earlier this morning came out and said, look, we are expecting to see power outages anywhere from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. So so prepare for that. But at this point, the time to really prepare is quickly closing. They've asked people to put anything that could fly away, any patio furniture or trash cans, bring them indoors because they are expecting to see quite a punch from Adalia uh, as we head into the afternoon hours. And so at this point, are there are they asking some people to leave their homes? Is it too late to do any of that? What are they telling people to do? So if you look, live along a barrier island, uh, they are asking people to voluntarily evacuate. There weren't any mandatory evacuations, at least the last time we checked for some of these areas. Tybee Island, for example, uh, they were filling sandbags yesterday trying to prepare, but there is a point where the one way in and off that island would close uh, because of flooding or because the winds are just that strong. In fact, the bridges and overpasses uh, here in the Savannah area as well expected to close at 2 p.m. or when the winds get too strong. Uh, so that's why at this point, um, those last minute plans needed to be done. Uh, people need to hunker down or if you can still get to safety, it, do it now because the window is quickly closing here in the Savannah area. You know, when I've covered hurricanes in places like Charleston, Savannah, these types of places, it, it, it's one of those situations where you're like, oh, the eye of the storm, you know, it's going to dissipate, yeah. it's whatever. Did people adhere to the warnings? Did people choose to evacuate? What are you hearing from people just on the ground as to what they thought about this storm and, and what they're planning to do? Well, here's the thing. So all day yesterday, people, I think, were preparing for a tropical storm because that is what was forecasted for this area. So yeah, there were a few people getting water, getting this, getting that, and trying to prepare. Uh, but this morning they're waking up and hearing that it could potentially still be a hurricane when it reaches this area. So you hope that they have enough of the medications, the pet food, uh, that they're all, uh, you know, got what they need essentially to ride out what could be, uh, even with a uh, weak hurricane, with the trees down, you could have roads blocked, you could still have flooding, and you can have power outages that will affect uh, your way of life for quite some time if they're not able to get it back right away. They did proactively cancel uh, classes, so schools in the area not uh, going to be in session today, and, and they'll have to assess when they can come back. But also, uh, most of the counties here uh, along the coast in Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, have suspended all gov government operations and buildings um, as well, just to try to keep employees at home and make sure that people aren't coming out for court hearings or appointments or that kind of Kind of thing too. Uh, so just looking around here, like I said, this typically would be a very busy uh, river walk. Lots of restaurants and stores in this area. But as you can see, uh, at least right this second, not a soul out here. Hmm. Well, that's good. That's how it's supposed to yeah, be, exactly. Manny. Thank you very much.